Okay, it's in the bogan arm now, and I'm trying to, to track with the arm sort of semi-rigid. Pretty good job, Jeff. And this is at full zoom. Yes, we can see the uh, suggestion of the tether on the right side, unless that's just a reflection on the window pane. Yeah, I could definitely see the tether in the viewfinder. Unfortunately, it was at a very a low angle through the window, and so the, there's a, a lot of distortion in the image. Copy. We have acquisition out the front window. I'm going to uh, go and take some more pictures of that. Roger. Okay, here's the last little bit I got through the um, front window. Uh, it's not very good. It was very low, and the window's pretty dirty. And uh, it was hard to get access, but I might as well down make it. It was about two and a half minutes worth. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, Houston, we got uh, contact. It's beautiful. We're going to get it on the TVs and downlink to you. We can see the tether. Great news, Franklin, and we'll look for that picture. Franklin, uh, we see a long line, a couple of star-like things, and a lot of things swimming in the foreground. Can you describe what you're seeing? Well, the long line is, uh, is a tether, um, and uh, there's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us, and uh, it's uh, illuminated by the sun at such low angles. So this is just a lot of stray light and is getting washed out uh, quickly, but uh, Claude is trying to do a, a quick, uh, good job here adjusting the cameras. Copy that. Houston, Columbia, um, I was using both the 20 uh, power binoculars and the 400 millimeter Nikon lens uh, under the body bag, um, and it only just disappeared in the glare of the sun about 30 seconds ago. The tether looked completely straight. Uh, I did not see any bright spots along the tether except at the very bottom uh, where there was a bright spot which was unresolvable. Uh, for me, I did not see any uh, anything above the satellite. Thank you. We copy all, Jeff. Good observations. We look forward to uh, your descriptions and photography when you get back.
Ed Houston. Andy, um, during the last mile in Bermuda passes, uh, the uh, signal was uh, coming in and out. It was getting pretty weak, so uh, uh, our analysis indicates that the battery's uh, just about uh, done all it can. Okay, well, uh, I'm impressed that it stayed in there as long as it did. That's that's great. Yeah, it's uh, pretty uh, impressive uh, little spacecraft. We were uh, we were kind of tickled to be able to get so much data out of it uh, out there uh, flying along. And that's pretty bright object. We've had some uh, good viewings uh, of it up here in the last uh, in the last evening. Well, we're uh, gleefully rubbing our hands together, anticipating uh, getting some uh, sightings uh, over Houston uh, a few days from now. Sounds great. Columbia, Houston, uh, if we could get another item 7 on spec 213. How does it work? Thanks, Umberto. And we're ready on uh, Mertz here. Go ahead. Found the lens. Uh, sorry for the delay. Fantastic. And just for your data points, uh, the first run was performed with a 105. Copy.
and we'd like you to um, adjust the aperture dimmer. Columbia, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We're ready for the event. Rye, this is Houston. Please call Columbia for a voice check. This is Rye. Are we calling Columbia? How do you hear me? Uh, Bonjourno, we have you loud and clear. Uh, hello, is the Commander Allen? Yeah, uh, yes, this is. This is uh, Commander Allen. Oh, thank you for receiving us on our board. We are trying to bother you as less as we can. Uh, may we speak to our two uh, astronauts, uh, Kaylee and Guido, and we see them? Uh, yes, you may, uh, and we're, uh, we're privileged to have them on board. Thank you. And we're with you on the flight deck. Hello, Scott. Hello, Umberto. And we're not getting your wireless. Okay, here we go. One little switch. We got you loud and clear. Sunset. Okay, we like that. Looks like it'll be a sunset over Madagascar. Yep, it should be a pretty one. 